seen a grown man playing with dinosaurs before. I'm telling you, them dry bones, they're the grandest toys any lot ever had. I discovered one once myself. Turned out to be the hip bone of a tree limb. I called it Elmosaurus. Made extinct by Dutch Elm disease. And everybody in the science department bought it anyway. Unless they were just trying to get me out of the room. Well, Surely you know by now that this is Dr. Angus Macabre, Mad Doctor Extraordinaire, and you're watching Mad Scope movies! The movies here are driving me mad, and they're making me mad too! They're the worst pieces of crap Hollywood has to offer. Today we're showing a real mess of rubbery dinosaurs, greedy drunken sots, and shipboard love quadrangles. It's worse than Titanic. It's called Unknown Island, and for the life of me, I wish it had remained unknown. So, this film features a lot of sweaty actors inside giant lizard suits that double as bobblehead dolls. And yeah, I know everyone these days says dinosaurs are birds and not lizards. All I can say is I'm glad they're not perching on power lines over me cars and how days. So don't send me any of your doughty, snarky letters or tweets, you bird lovers. It's all part of me general madness anyway. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, dinosaurs. This island ain't no Jurassic Park. It's not even Jurassic Playground. This film's movie poster should have said, When Dinosaurs Drooled. So, well, I warned you. Brace yourselves. Roll it, Igor! place like this, Carol. <laughs> Don't be silly, Ted. They've been in worse places in New York and had to pay a cover charge, too. Only there it's called slumming. I'll survive and love it. Is Captain Janowski here? I said it's Captain. Is he here? Catch him laughing. <laughs> so I knocked their heads together like a couple of coconuts and I picked them up and threw them at the bartender. <laughs> you should have seen them bottles and glasses fly. It looks like a trader of wild animals, all right. <laughs> Say, where did that come from? 
I've never seen it in Singapore before. You wouldn't in a joint you hang out. Cigarette, darling? Thank you. You sure you'll be all right for a few minutes? I'm just as safe as I'd be in a den full of wolves. Hey, if my barometer's right, I think she's giving me the once over right now. You're delirious. Ten bucks says so. And 20 more says she'll be drinking with me in five minutes. And 50 more says an hour from now she and me will be, well, pals. Captain Tanowski? You see? She's already taken the trouble to find out what my name is. I'm Ted Osborne. Morley, the ship's broker, referred me to you. Morley, eh? Yeah, he said I might find you here. Well, you found me. Ten bucks, skipper. Morley tells me you own a thousand ton steamer, Captain. Just what I want. My ship is not for sale. Oh, I don't want to buy your ship. I'm after a charter. Three months guarantee with monthly options after that. I want to sail at once. I'm already chartered. The cash will be put up in advance in Cox's bank. Regular underwriter's race plus 20% bonus. You'll never get a better deal. What's the game? Black market? <laughs> Hardly. Look me up at the American consulate if you're in doubt. What then? I'll give you your destination and orders after we up anchor. Nobody gives Tarnowski orders. Oh, Captain, we, we can't discuss business here. Why not come over to my table where we'll have more privacy? Besides, my fiance would like to meet you, Miss Lane. Oh, she would, would she? Sure, let's go over to your table. It's more private and more cozy like, eh, Sanderson? <laughs> Carol, this is Captain Tarnowski and uh, Sanderson, my first mate. How do you do? So this is a notorious Captain Tarnowski. Oh, you heard about me, huh? No, but I probably will, from you. <laughs> uh, sit down, Captain, sit down. No, when I drink, I like to spread out. We'll get a private room. You all seem to be occupied. They won't be for long. Tell him what you wanted his boat for? We'll have to, unless we can soften them up. Oh. All right, out. Who says so? I said so, out! We're not leaving until we're ready. Lady, you're ready right now. You heard the lady. Go on, blow. Honey, get rid of this pig. This will only take a second. Oh, that'll be a fight. You know it's a tough butter when the, even the girlies throw in on the fracas. Out you pixies go, out the door or through the grass skirt they quarter. Well, now we can be comfortable. Didn't that uh, beer bottle give you a wee bit of a headache? What beer bottle? He's been lost in every bar on the China coast. <laughs> well, now we can be more private-like. Give that to the lady. To you, miss. Twenty bucks, mate. How about your ship, Captain? Uh, do we charter her? We? That's right, Captain. We. She's not fit for your kind, miss. Nothing but a floating pig pen. No, the Pelican is the best wild animal ship on the high seas, but he's right. There's nothing but a floating pig pen. It's just a small, dirty tramp fitted up with iron cages to bring back wild animals. But it's not exactly the kind of a ship that you'd want for a, a honeymoon trip. Wrong guess, Captain. <laughs> we don't intend to be married until we get back. Fact is, I'm about to go into the wild animal business myself. Ah, oh, it's the greatest game in the world. I've been hunting them and transporting them since I was a boy. But you don't stack up to me like the kind of a fella that I'd send after wild animals. Well, these animals may not be wild. In fact, they may not be alive. You see, they've been dead for millions of years. And I thought you were a jungle feeler. Oh, I see. You mean the fossil bones of extinct beasts. The skeletons of the big boys, like the giant brontosaurus and the flesh-eating tyrannosaurus. Museum stuff. <laughs> Here's to you, Captain. I see you know something about your paleontology. 
That means prehistoric animals. Thanks. I went to school, too. <laughs> That's very interesting. Captain, then you will charter us your ship? Well, I never thought much about letting a woman sail with us before now. Look, I'll take you to animals you never dreamed existed. The last specimens of gigantic creatures that roamed the Earth before man came into existence. A minute ago, you were talking about skeletons. Now, all of a sudden, they come alive. He's batty and they're the Joker. What other Joker? Never mind about that. But you're going to have to tell me a little more about this deal. If we want a ship, darling, I guess you'll have to. All right, I'll give it to you in tabloid form. I was a Navy flyer in the South Pacific during the war. They sent me out on a solo mission, scouting some Jap base. Got caught in a typhoon, blown off my course. I flew over hundreds of small, uncharted islands. On one of these islands, I saw things, live things, three times the size of army tanks. Did the Navy investigate? I never reported what I saw. Why should I? Those things had nothing to do with the war. Besides, they might think I was suffering from battle fatigue. That's what happened. Shut up, will you? Go ahead, Osborne. I'm positive they were the last living descendants of prehistoric monsters practically unknown to modern civilization. You think you can find this island again? I'm sure of it. How big is it? Well, roughly about 10 miles square. But it was none of the usual coral atolls found in that particular area of the Pacific. This island had mountains and deep jungle valleys. Parts of it were barren, too. I believe it was the remaining tip of a vast continent that gradually sank into the sea ages ago. On such matters, I call no man a liar. New islands are rising and old ones are sinking in the South Seas even today. I've seen with my own eyes things you wouldn't believe. Here. Take a look at this picture. I shot it from the plane. That looks like a large animal, but it could be a rock formation or a big shadow. Or a giant hot dog. That beast takes a worse photograph than Nick Nolte. Or it might even be exactly what you claim it is. It moved, I tell you. It walked. Or rather, it, it, it waddled like some gigantic, hideous sort of lizard. I'm sure Ted's right, Captain. Sure, but a thing like this takes money. Lots of money. I'm prepared to pay any price you name, Captain. And I'll deposit it to your account before we sail. Oh, so that's the way it is, huh? Now, wait a minute. I've got nothing to hide. Miss Lane is financing this expedition for me. But I'll repay it ten times over from the proceeds of what'll be the most sensational animal hunt on Earth. All I'm interested in is the scientific aspects of the discovery. Is that clear enough for you? Quite clear. And quite agreeable, Mr. Osborne. Get Fairbanks. Bring him in here. Well, I find it. At the bar, behind a bottle of rum, as usual. Nice. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want any strangers in on this. Who's Fairbanks? Well, he's the man that Sanderson was trying to tell you about. You'll have a lot in common. You flew over this island. He's been on it. Why, that's impossible. That's what I thought, too, at first. But his story confirms yours. Yours confirms his. But if he's really been there, why hasn't he... Well, you see, he's uh, not exactly crazy, but too much sun has scrambled his brains. We picked him up about a year ago off of a life raft. He was nothing but skin and bones, delirious and raving about horrible animals as big as houses. What a pity. He's been trying to blot that stuff out of his memory ever since by drinking himself to death. Fairbanks, is he an American? Ex-captain of the Marines. We ought to do something for him. Well, if he's actually been on this island and what he says is true, we ought to take him along with us. He might come in handy. That's what I figured. How did he ever find it? Hey, I recognize that laugh, no? She was jilted by Clark Gable. He didn't. It found him. It seems that he and four or five of his pals have bought a sloop after the war and were going to take a pleasure cruise around to some of the islands they'd seen action on. Typhoon blew him off of their course, too. Then they got caught in some kind of a mysterious current that beached him and smashed the boat to bits. Hey! And that guy was in Maltese Falcon. On this island? Yeah, go ahead and get it. All right. Then what? Well, that's about all we could ever get out of him, except that he's the only one that ever came back. Nice boy, out. Yeah. 
Hi, Fairbanks. Hey, that guy was in the water crap. Wants to see you. Who's Captain Tarnowski? <laughs> What's the matter, no dough? Come on, the captain will buy you a drink. Oh, a drink? Oh, why didn't you say so? Your pleasure to drink with Captain Tarnowski. Who is he? Come on. Hello, Fairbanks. Have a drink. Mr. Fairbanks, won't you sit down? I'm Carol Lane, and this is Ted Osborne. How do you do? Mr. Fairbanks, uh, Captain Tarnowski tells me that... We're going back to that island, Fairbanks. Back to find the beasts that chewed up your pals while they were still alive and kicking. You want to come along? Still think you want to go? What about it, Ted? Well, my mind's made up, but I don't think you ought to go, Carol. My mind's made up, too. When can we sail, Captain? Well, I could be ready to sail by tomorrow midnight. All right, we'll have our luggage and equipment put aboard the ship. Oh, uh, one thing more. The money. We'll meet you at the bank tomorrow. Good enough. What about Mr. Fairbanks? Oh, I think I can persuade him to change his mind. I certainly hope so. Well, here's to a successful trip. And a pleasant one. Let's go, Carol. See you in the bank in the morning. Right. Bye, Captain. Bye. What kind of a crazy deal did you get us into? It ain't so crazy. A woman like that don't happen every day. Ah, uh, sometimes I think you're cracked worse than Fairbanks. <laughs> when we sail, I want him aboard. again, 10 degrees south or southeast. That's all right. Let him take care of the navigation. Says we ought to reach the island in about three or four days. Good. There's no wonder nobody ever ran into this island before. We're a hundred miles off any shipping lane. You better forget the day when we might never reach that island. Skipper. What's the matter with you? What's on your mind? Crew muttering ever since we veered off the Borneo route. They know we have no legitimate business in these waters. I got a strong hunch they're cooking up something. Keep a close check on them until we get there. Once we reach the island, there's nothing they can do about it. They sneak up on you before you know it. Well, put hobnail boots on them. You're the first mate, ain't you? <laughs> The wind seems to be getting stronger. Yeah, we might have a little blow. Nothing much, though. Ted says we should reach the island in a few days. That's right. You know, this is going to mean so much to him. Fame, recognition, everything he's ever wanted. I'll be so happy for him. But you know, Captain, confidentially, I'll be glad when the trip's all over. We'll all be glad. Oh, by the way, Captain, Ted wants to tell the crew that there's a bonus for every animal that we... 
Nobody tells my crew anything. Except me. Understand? Well, I see you've decided to get prettied up. You gonna finally come out on deck? How are you and your brother rat? <laughs> you want a drink? No, thanks. You made me allergic to Mickey Finn's. Oh, well, thanks for explaining that. Wouldn't want to slow the movie down with some action of a guy getting the shanghai Just non-stop blabbing about it is so much more exciting. That's known as a Tarnowski cure. You're a pretty tough patient. But someday you're gonna thank me for talking into this trip. You're beginning to look like a new man. Well, almost a man. I don't want anything to happen to you before we reach the island. I'm gonna need you. If we ever reach it. We'll reach it, all right. We're almost there now. Snooping is not part of your duties on this ship. Go to my cabin and get my glasses. Aye, sir. Crew doesn't know where we're going, huh? My crew goes where I tell them. They don't ask questions. Well, if they ever start asking them, it might be embarrassing. Oh, not that it makes any difference to me. It's quicker having your throat cut by a Lasker's knife than be crushed by a monster you don't even see or hear until a shadow as big as a mountain falls. Over. Shut up! What's the matter? A friend here has still got the jitters. of our fathers with fear. The taboo island rising out of the sea. The home of monsters that are forbidden to even look upon. Cowards submit. Laskers never. Never, 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 never. Look you brothers, in my hand is the blade of justice. If we die, we must see the blood of our masters. Aye, you're right. When shall it be? When? Tonight. Then the hour. Later. Until then, silence. You know it's bad when the action sequence is watching the hands of a clock face.
All right, drop him. What? And get us all cut up while we're asleep? You heard what I said. Drop him. Don't be afraid, matey. They haven't got the nerve to start anything again. Because if they do, they'll be shark bait before I'm a day older. of a luxury liner. Any objections? No. Have you any idea where Mr. Osborne is? He's probably making out his last will and testament. Aren't you being facetious, Mr. Fairbanks? It's easier that way. It keeps me from thinking too much. You know, I've been thinking. I don't believe you've ever been on that island. Your uh, hallucinations, shall we call them, were probably nothing more than a king-size case of the DTs. Call them what you want. Oh, crazy fools dragging you along on a deal like this. Nobody dragged me. And I'll thank you to mind well, your own. Well, and you're a fool, too. Land, Captain, off the starboard bow. That might be the island. That sounds like it. Let's have a look. Ted, what is it? Have you actually sighted it? That's it, honey. Oh, Captain, there's the island. It might be. What do you mean, it might be? The way I plotted this course, it's got to be. What's our speed? Twelve knots. Fairbanks, any reefs offshore? Circled with them. You'll be smashed to pieces if you try to go in. Better anchor offshore. You can drop the hook there. If you're still going through with it. We're still going through with it. OK, it's your funeral. Mine, too, probably. Reduce speed half ahead. Half ahead. Looks like Pretty Boy here must have really been in the Navy. That's a pretty rough country. Holy Jasper. It, it can't be. Look to the left of the ridge, Captain. It's only a model. Here, let me see. What is it, Ted? It's gone. It's disappeared. I couldn't see anything. What was it? What did it look like? It looked like something you see during a 10-day binge. You just make a mouthful for that thing, Captain. I've never seen anything yet I couldn't handle. Animal or human? With your charm, I don't wonder. Now, come on. Let's get the equipment in the boat. Oh, Fairbanks, uh, change your mind about going ashore? But you ought to, Carol. I've nothing to fear, Mr. Fairbanks. After all, there's some men going along. Sanderson, you and Edwards break out the equipment. We're going ashore. Aye, sir. All right, all right. Get a move on. We haven't got all day. Hey, you two, give a hand with those crates. Keep busy. I'll leave the engineer in charge of the ship. You're going ashore with us. Aye, aye, sir. Take it up, Laskus, the man the boat. Yes, sir. Get that ladder over the side. Hey, you up high. Get that line down here. Come on, move. Don't tear that tight. Pull those wedges. Mr. Fairbanks. I uh, shouldn't have said what I did. I'm sorry. Apology unnecessary, but accepted. I do wish you'd change your mind about coming with us, though. Ted was counting on you, and I'd feel better about it, too. Nice try, but I should have recognized the approach. You're impossible. You better stop insulting people, Tarnowski. It's catchy. So the little lady's picking up my habits, eh? She'll learn a lot more before I'm through. Hope you've got heavier guns than that aboard. I got guns big enough to knock down elephants. Cordite shells, huh? Grenades, too. I've changed my mind. I think I'll go along. I want to hear you when you start screaming. Hello, 
of your equipment. Aye, sir. Ted! Captain Locke! Fairbanks, what are these? Tracks of dinosaurs. Oh, they come down to the beach occasionally. You know, that might be what you saw from the ship. Well, how far in are the other animals? About half a mile. Not enough food near the water to attract them. They're flesh eaters. They roam more in the open, more barren spots. I've never seen them near the beach, though. If you want to see them, you'll have to go find them. They won't come to you. With the exception of that hairy monster I was telling you about. He'll look us up once he gets the scent. Well, that's a charming thought. What about the boat, Skipper? Edwards, when you finish unloading, stand by the boat. Shoot anybody that tries to leave the island without orders from me. All right, Captain. You think the Laskers will try? I don't think they will, but I don't take any chances. Well, let's go. Fairbanks, lead the way. We'll have to find a spot to make camp. Better stick close. Swamp all over the place. All right, all right. Get in that boat and start unloading. Come on, move! Look, over there. What are they? Giant dinosaurs. 75 feet long as they're an inch. And as high as a two-story building. Nessie, this island doesn't look like Bonnie Skolan, but that's Nessie for a fact. You can tell there's no fake in there. Oh, well, that must be her stunt double there alongside her. They lived millions of years ago. Some of them weighed over 20 tons. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of chances to photograph them and others. I guess you two didn't dream this up after all. Looks like we're going to be in for a little excitement, eh, Sanderson? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, Fairbanks, let's go. My friend's another unique little pet. Finback lizard. Cute. I was right. We're going to see things on this island that no other human being has ever seen. Look, darling. It's here. They're real. Probably many others. I never doubted you for a moment, Ted. Shall we go on, or do you two want to stay here and tell each other how wonderful you are? Fairbanks is right. Let's keep moving. Leave a little slack in that line. Think we'll need those things? We could use field artillery. I'd still not be sure. Make sure that thing is secure. Ted, I've got the strangest feeling. Like we were being watched. Just your imagination, darling. Those beasts won't come near the camp. I'll probably have to photograph them with a telescopic lens. You know where the nearest water is? Yeah, about a quarter of a mile over the rise. There's a small spring. Is it safe? Sure. Keep out of the soft mud and tall grass. Go on. Hi, sir. Get yourself a boy. Get the water. Yeah. Over that rise is a small spring. <laughs> now that's what I call a fine sense of humor. Must be one of them at the spring. Come on. Monster grab 
रात कर हर इसलिए Giant lizards. Ah, these guys won't do any good. Won't even scare them away. Can we do something for them? We used to. Ah! I told you what could happen when we were back in Singapore. There's one thing I can do. So he shot the poor bugger, just as he was about to die of embarrassment anyway. Those dreaded rubber sores. They're deadly to just be caught in the same shot with one, much less to be attacked by the back projection. Why was it uh, that directors always tried to push off these lame attempts at dinosaurs when everyone knows what they're supposed to look like? Cheap special effects that even your Auntie Bess would be a shame to look at only make the filmmakers more of a laughing stock than when they were down on their hands and knees begging for the money for this crap! I hear you, Fluffy. I'll feed you after the movie. I've got to do something about that pet door. It must weigh 150 stone. Waiting until they attack us. Let's get out of here. monster. We must get off this accursed island. But how? We haven't got no guns to fight. That devilish captain is more evil than the monster. But we don't need any guns. You have plan? <whistles> Mr. Mate, break out my dinner suit and crack open a bottle of champagne. This ain't the kind of a place for that outfit, miss. Maybe not, but I thought it'd help me feel better. I understand. Hmm, you know, you have very good taste. Makes me feel better, too, but definitely. Thank you, sir. What were they singing? Gives me the creeps. I don't know, some funeral chant, I guess. Where's Osmond? In his tent, I think. Developing pictures. I'll be right back. Don't stray away from the fire. Boy, those pictures I took today are terrific. I'll be famous. A man was killed today, Osborne. The way you say it, you think I killed him. A lot more men are liable to be killed before this is over. It would be unfortunate if it happens. But men have been killed before in the interest of science. I want you to call this thing off. Call it off? And get Carol off this island. Oh, so that's it. Pretending concern over Carol to cover your own yellow streak. Back up, Fairbanks. I'm not leaving this island until I get all the pictures I need. All right, Osmond. But if anything happens to Carol... Ted! What is it? I don't know for sure. 
get over behind this rock. Don't fire. If you wound him, he'll only charge and tear us all to pieces. Come on, get behind the rock. At this point, the director is just saying, just keep staring. I'm thinking, we're about to just barely escape some action actually happening. Oh, well, it's a close one. think that baby will be back again tonight. Take one of the natives and check with Edwards down at the beach before you turn in. Aye. You were... Sleeping? Hardly. Same probably goes for everyone in camp tonight. Thanks. I guess whatever it was out there, its hunger's been satisfied. No, he won't be back, I'm sure. I don't think Tarnowski had any trouble sleeping. I heard him snoring. Brave man. Or stupid. Probably both. Same might go for your friend Osborne. What have you got against Ted? Nothing, I guess. It wouldn't be hard to develop something. Then why do you go out of your way to be nasty about him? Maybe I don't like the way he parts his hair. Maybe I don't like the idea of dying just so he can get a few more of his precious pictures. No, I think we should have left you right where we found you. Is this private or can anybody sit in? You know, I don't know which way you look more beautiful. When you're mad or when you're smiling. Let me see. Take your filthy hands off of me! Well, there you go. It never pays to be the only woman on a remote primordial island filled with monsters, surrounded by horrific beasties slathering at the mouth and scraping about in their great clawed feet. And then there's the dinosaurs, too. She'd have done better to try her luck in that butter fight. Try a stunt like that again, Tanaski, and I'll kill you. Okay, Osborne. I won't argue about it with you. Right now. Ted, we've got to get off this awful island now. We can't, darling. Not after coming this far. I've got to have more pictures. Pictures? 
Is that all that matters to you? No, of course not, but... All right, tell you what. We'll leave tomorrow, pictures or no pictures. Although I would have liked to crack at that giant sloth. So, that thing was a giant sloth. Megatherium. Nice of him to come up with a real animal. Though that looked more like a guy in a gorilla suit with a dog nose glued on. You may not know this, but before I entered medical school, I was studying to be become a mad paleontologist. I can tell you, that was no giant sloth. The brute was only the slowest thing on two feet, and it was bloodthirsty only for leaves. So, philosophically speaking, did they use a real ancient beastie? Or did they just make up one on their own? Or did they just not care? That's all I'm asking. Oh, very well. I'll tell Tanaski in the morning. There's not much activity for breaking up camp. Well, you see, Carol, Did I... you tell Tarnowski? <sighs> not yet. They're preparing to go in search of the animals. Uh, I'll talk to him now. Tarnowski, we decided to leave today and not go on the hunt. It's a long swim back to Singapore. My ship ain't sailing till I give the orders. And I ain't giving any orders till I take one of those monsters. Alive. What? Alive? All I've wanted is pictures, and I've got them. So you got your pictures, and you're happy. But one of those animals is worth a million dollars to me, and I ain't leaving till I get one. Why, that's impossible. If you and the girl want to stay on the ship till this is over, I'll send you back tonight. Why can't you send her back now? Because I can't spare any of the crew. Well, oh, that's all right. I don't mind. Oh, so with the boyfriend, it's get me off this awful island. But no, it's all oh, I don't mind. Just like a woman, putting her man on the spot like that. Bet you this script was written by a lad. We're all set, Captain. Now see that those men stick close with their ammunition. Fairbanks, lead the way. spots I told you about. It's unbelievable. Oh, Jasper, a whole slew of them. Looks like a prehistoric graveyard. It's exactly what it is. Those flesh-eating monsters have been destroying each other for centuries. Survival of the fittest. Seems a pity, doesn't it? Quiet. Start unloading that ammunition. They've sighted us. They're coming at us. It is not right for mortal men to be here. He's right. We're all going back. Ever notice how easy it is to kill an actor with a knife? They're getting closer. Uh, Better save your bullets, you're gonna need them. Quick, get the grenades.
Townsmen Guild of Sheffield reenacting the Battle of Pearl Harbor. Here's some trivia for you. The dinosaur they just killed was actually the guy inside the rubber suit fainting. I read it. You see, I do me research here. I don't just go off on crazy boondoggles. They're well thought out crazy boondoggles. them for a pet. Poor Samson. What a horrible way to die. I'll have nightmares for the rest of my life. Those animals. Take it easy, honey. Take it easy. We'll be off the island soon. If you get back to camp, I'll get my film together and pack. You better get her on the ship right away. I wouldn't stop for anything if I were you. Fortunately, you're not me. I'm not leaving here without my pictures. Not after what I went through to get them. What you went through? bad about your first mate. Yeah. You look like you're on your last legs. Is that a wish or an observation? Could be both. Ah, it's just jungle fever. It's coming back on me again. Maybe you ought to get out of this place, too. I ain't leaving here till I get one of those big babies alive. No jungle fever's gonna get me down. A couple of days, I'll be as good as new. A little whiskey will fix me up. Ted. Ted, are you in there? Hello, darling. How are you feeling? Much better. Well, it won't be long now. Just one more roll of film to develop. Can't you do it on board ship? Oh, I want to finish as long as I've started. Another half hour won't matter. Come on in and watch. No. I think I'll go for a little walk. Oh, I, I don't think that's such a good idea. Don't worry. I won't go far. Tarnowski invited me in for a drink, but I'm particular who I drink with, so I lifted a few bottles and came out here. You gonna drink it? Well, I might have to. See, I made a little deal with myself. I set a bottle up on that rock. If I miss the bottle, I drink it. Just like a cracker, find an unspoiled island and start littering. Somewhere there's an Indian shedding a tear. Yeah, that's an old joke. Look it up! <laughs> Nothing to it. Just good, clean living. John Fairbanks, all-American boy, that's me. Good to my parents, kind to animals, loved children. Probably make some girl a fine husband. Well, I guess I better be getting back to camp. Good. I'll come along. All right. The barricade is ready, Captain. Good work, Zola. Good work. When we get back aboard the ship, I'm going to make you second mate. No, first mate. That's it. First mate. Thank you, Captain. Gulab will serve you well. Here, this will help your fever. Pour oil on every one of these sticks. Soak it up good. Use up all the oil we got. All right, Captain. All your whiskey? It's all gone. Oh, yeah, have another one. No, thanks. I've had enough. Would you like to have a little farewell drink? No, thank you. What are you building, a stockade? Something like that. In case some man-eaters decide to attack. 
You don't expect that flimsy barricade to stop them. No animals with hoofs or claws or scales is going to come through a wall of fire. Fire? Yeah, get the barricade all smeared with oil. Touch of a match, I got a wall of fire. Maybe I'll let one come through. Just one. And we'll have a little pet on our trip home. <laughs> all set, Carol. Have the men get the boat ready, Captain. No, 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 I changed my mind. Now, wait a minute, Ternowski. We settled all this this morning. All right. The girl can go. I don't want anything to happen to her. But you stay. What for? I've got all the pictures I need. I don't care anything about pictures. I told you I was going to take one of these animals alive. And I'm going to need you for something special. Special. <laughs> the fever and the whiskey's half out of his mind. Don't start anything. Oh, we don't need any help from him. You and I will be able to handle things here. We? Sure, you forget I'm staying. Fairbanks, I'm beginning to like you. I don't want nothing to happen to you, neither. He'd make a better decoy. Decoy? Why, you're crazy. That's about all you're good for, Osborne. Ted, don't pay any attention to him. Look, Tarnoski, you better let them go. We can handle things. Nobody's telling me what to do. I'm going to take him with me. That'll sort of clear your way with a lady. You like that, wouldn't you? Boy. Man, the random gunfighter here is out of control. They might as well have just gone to Portland. That's Edwards. Ah! Where's them lasters? They must be after the boat. Come on. This is where the filmmakers really put your imagination to the test. Try to imagine those shots going together. Well, somebody drag those guys out of the shallow end. Certain. What are we going to do? Can we signal the ship with the rockets? <laughs> what are you laughing at? All the rockets went down with the boat. <laughs> oh, that's fine. How long will it be before the ship sends a boat to look for us? A week, anyhow. They know we have plenty of supplies. A week? You jumped me before I knew what happened. That's all your fault. You crazy wife, it hadn't been for you. Lay off! Smoke. Our supplies. Yeah, I told you. Portland. Tarnowski's firewall. Something touched it off. My pictures. Well, at least some of my film is safe. Is that all you can think of at a time like this? Your precious pictures? But it's everything I've worked for. The only proof of what I've seen. It's my whole future. You know, I'm beginning to realize what you mean, Ted. Don't you think we better start figuring out some way of getting off this island, or there'll be no future for any of us?
better take care of that arm before it becomes infected. Well, it'll be all right. Tanaska just found a couple of grenades. Keep a close watch on him. That's all the ammunition there is left. He's gone a bit screwy since that fever caught up with him again. Well, Captain, what do we do now? I don't know what you're going to do, but I got a bottle of whiskey around here someplace. I'm going to find it. Fever's really got him now. Oh, never mind him. We've got our own problems. I once got off this place on a raft. You want to try it? Sure, it's a good idea. Come on, let's get down to the beach. Found this about a quarter of a mile down the beach. So, that was our sloop. Must have drifted around from the other side of the island where we beached. Hey, where's Tanoski? How should I know? Say he's going out to find something for a sail. Good for amateurs. They make a regular Noah's Ark out of it, animals and all. <laughs> well, it seems to be working all right. Not bad considering I failed my Girl Scouts test. I suppose in 1948 that would have meant some kind of woodsy skills. These days it'd be a DNA test, and even that wouldn't count. One of the great victories of mod science. Oh, well, they're okay. Well, I guess that'll be about it, won't it, Fairbanks? How much longer before it'll be finished? Oh, not much longer. Don't forget we're as anxious to get out of here as you are. Yeah, I saw some tools back at the camp right near where the supply tent was. We'll be needing them when we start planking this thing. Go get them, Osborne. I'll go. You stay here and help with the rest. Make sure you stay on the path, Carol. Yeah, I will. Where's Tarnowski? Well, it was here a minute ago. What difference does it make? I feel better when he's not around. Don't blame me. He's half out of his mind. <laughs> What's the matter? The jungle frighten you? No, I... I was just a little nervous, that's all. Oh, come on, I'll uh, show you a shortcut. 
I'll go back the same way I came. <laughs> Take your hands off of me! Let me go! Let go! <laughs> Let's go. Tanoski got him. Good thing he did. Carol, Tanoski's got her. Which way could they have gone? I don't know. We'd better split up and try to find them. It'll soon be too dark to pick up the trail otherwise. You'll never find them in this jungle? Oh, Carol will be all right. She'll get away from Tanowski, I'm sure. All right, go back to the beach. You'll be safe there. You and your film, that's all you think about anyway. Fairbanks, I've taken about all I'm going to from you. When this mess is over and we're back in the mainland, you and I are going to settle a couple of things. We'll settle it right now. Save it, Fairbanks. This is no time for that. Oh, that was gripping. For a second there, I was afraid the actors might, I don't know, maybe get their shirts dirty. Fortunately, the one armed man overpowered the both of them. Well, I guess we'll better wait till morning before we try to pick up the trail. As well as you may know this jungle, you know we can't fight darkness. I guess we wouldn't have much of a chance. Well, let's get out of here. Why don't you take a little nap? What's the matter? Don't you trust me? No. Does that strike you as being strange? What do we do now? That all depends. On what? I got a boat hidden about two miles from here. We'll use it to get back to the ship. Just you and I. What about the others? Oh, they got plenty of company. Come on now. What's it going to be? You said you had a boat. That's impossible. I saw it smashed to bits today. Oh, this is a skiff from Fairbanks' sloop. Must have got washed up by one of them tricky currents. I got it hidden in the brush. It's a little ways down the beach. Well, what do you say? What else can I do? I'll do anything to get off this island. <laughs> You're all alike, ain't you? Now, wait a minute. You keep your end of the bargain first. Get us out of here. All right. First thing in the morning, we'll shove off. You mean we have to stay here tonight? Sure. I ain't gonna let anything happen to you. I know you ain't gonna run away with all these hungry monsters roaming around loose in the jungle. <laughs> left this. I know this jungle in the dark. I've got to find Carol. Go to the beach and watch the raft, Fairbanks.
Good thing he knows the jungle, it being pitch black and everything. Be careful you don't get sunburned out there in the darkness. Something's liable to catch up with us. I'm getting you to the beach first. Come on, keep going. Look! Over there! Come on. Get behind this rock. anyone say King Kong versus Godzilla? So consider our ingredients in this putrid monster stew. They're on the island, they got a vicious hairy beastie, and a giant lizard. Then add a dash of maniacal leader, and a pinch of endangered lassie. This movie was ahead of its time, in a rip-off kind of way. Coming from that direction.
Carol, you all right? Yes, Ted. I'm all right. Well, what was all the roaring and screaming about? What happened? Now, let's get off this island. Well, folks, I thought you might like to know. We'll be underway in a minute. Good. Carol, you've been pretty wonderful through all this. When we get back to Singapore, we'll... We'll have a few things to settle, Ted. Important things. Particularly about us. I understand. They're an attractive couple. At least they look better as they're leaving. But a relationship forged under overwhelming hardship never lasts. It's the classic Hollywood mistake. The daily grind of married life just can't compare to the thrill of surviving a rubber dinosaur attack. Pretty soon, they'll be battling over which way the toilet paper is hanging, and it's just not the same. Well, I gotta say, I'm a little annoyed that they went all the way out to this island and there was no mad scientist on it. It's such a great place to hide your evil ways from the rest of the world. Now don't get me wrong. It's great being on the ground behind thick stone walls all dripping with water and covered with slime like me mad dungeon here. Though it is a wee bit hotter on the air conditioning. But an island. It was a missed opportunity in the film. I mean, even Gilligan's Island had a mad doctor. Well, that's it for this time. I hope you're happy. As if entertaining you was the only thing I had to do around here. Cleaning up after Fluffy is a full day's work in itself. So off with you, you grand bam pot. <laughs>